If you want to be my friend, you would better go and get a pen. Now you. Get a pen. Write a letter. We have the stress of all the girls. You nailed that. Wish you well. One more. That's really good. Sign your pen, pal. Thank not you. gonna lie, it's, it hasn't great. been my day, my week, my month, or, or even my year. year. <laughs> <laughs> clap, 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 clap. But your decade. I, I've never seen more cameras in a smaller room, and, and it's um, I'm. Uh, you feel plus, good about it? Uh, no, I'm having a panic attack. Oh, well, they're not have even you on. ever been on Chris Hansen's show? <laughs> <laughs> twice, yeah. anyways, twice. <laughs> This is what it's like if Chris Every Hansen. Every season, brother. <laughs> this is Chris Hansen, and he finally, he's doing a podcast, no, but still trying to out people. <laughs> also, worry, it's the guy, the guy who, like many actors, when you get like one episode, is like, all right, if you guys ever want me back, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm around, brother. Yeah, I'm I'd around. love to come back. Hit I'd me love up. I love you guys, man. You're yeah. crazy. Love to come back. Honestly, that launched my career. <laughs> Remember that prisoner who became a hot model because he got that one that yes. shot? <laughs> Every time I walk out of the Bob's Burgers like recording, I go, hey, whenever you guys want me back. <laughs> it's that whole energy. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined today by Eric Andre. Andre. Woo! What, do I look at a particular camera? All I mean, of that them. One's your first all of them time together. On. <laughs> first time on camera, dude. <laughs> time. The one with the biggest lens How is does yours. it work? <laughs> Yeah, that's is your. Is there that's film your... inside, or is there candy in each no, of them? These are all fake. This is just rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> these are all pez dispensers. <laughs> we rehearse, man. You're rehearsing. Yeah, yeah, Paula yeah. Poundstone's coming in later, and you want to <laughs> rev the engine before what, you get there. Ha, what, what lubricates this engine? Oh, we'll get Eric. To yeah, get, yeah, yeah. Be ready to, for to warm up for Paula. This is yeah. like a Q to Q. We're just doing a Q to Q today. What's a Q to Q? In uh, like theater, they'll just once they have all their light cues and all the things, they'll just go Q Q Q Q Q. Oh. It's like the last thing you do before. Are you, you a open. theater guy? That's where I started. Yeah. Really? Yeah, barely. Have you ever done? Wow. Would Would you? I bet you yes. have never done a play. But would you do a play? Oh no, plays are awful. Okay. Well, I don't want to diss the theater. Yeah, but what about being in one? Then maybe you like it. Uh, show me the fucking money, y'all. You, you know go. what I'm saying? Okay, Daniel, go get the money. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, go get the briefcase. I have a jar of pennies. You're on. B- be in my play. <laughs> it's the shittiest title to the show. You're on. Be in my play. <laughs> I think I would. No, I, I, I think I, I think I would if it was cool. I, I've, I've, I've seen like. 99% of the plays I've seen are awful, and I think 1% are rad. Yeah. You? Yeah, I'm, in, you I'm including musicals in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm including ballet, opera, musicals, and plays. All They're all in one part of my stage. brain. Yeah. Stage, stage theater. Yeah, and I went to an arts high school and, and a music college, and I was yeah. pro, part of what they called the Pro Arts Consortium Where in Boston. Was, okay, Boston. Yeah, I went to Berkeley you College played, of Wasting Money Jazz Music. Bass? Yes. Did so you, Anything I, else? I played cello, a bunch of stuff poorly. Drums, cello, That's piano, such a tuba. Fucking late reveal. Have you? T- have you? Because I saw an I Instagram and I was like, oh, I never knew you were fucking legit you bass had, player. I, I, I'm, I'm not really there, legit. Right? Yeah, no, I'm not really legit. I'm not legit. I just I mean, went I to played... an art school. You just named a resume I, that would blow my musical no, career out of the water. I, I mean, uh, I the played co- the recorder, bro, <laughs> in Recorders the goal. jungle. You, Eric, you have enough. You have enough that if somebody left one in a hotel lobby, you could blow everybody's mind. But if you were trying to get the gig, they probably wouldn't hire you. Was that I'm fair? I'm 20 years rusty. I mean, when I was 19 years old, 20 years old, I was fucking, I could be like, do, 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 I play the Seinfeld oh, theme <laughs> song. After those things. <laughs> I was like, you only know Seinfeld. Bum, 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 bum. That was my final exam. I was like, fuck. Bum, 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 But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a hard instrument, and it, when you get rusty pretty quick, yeah. so I, I don't, yeah. I don't maintain the practice the practicing is very tedious okay. i yeah. don't have the attention span anymore i barely had the attention span when i was 19 20 21 playing gotcha. it but God, uh it was that. a pain in the ass and if you don't have like a recital or a performance to gear up for yes. you don't have that deadline the pressure of that performance and that deadline or, you don't really practice that's what i say or that neuroses of like i have to have this in my head. like there's just people every day that if they're not yeah they're that's noodling their, that's they're, their video game or they're reading yeah. or whatever it's yeah just, Noodling around. Jerry yes. Garcia. I will, Jerry Garcia to ate him alive. I will tell you this. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> I, I want to go back to play for you. 
<laughs> because we have toyed with this idea for so long that it either definitely will or definitely won't happen at this point. At this it's point, it's a very it's... lucrative business. If you have a successful play, it's a very lucrative. I heard that Trey Parker and Matt Stone made more money up oh the Mormon God, than yes. South Park, which is uh, on its. Well, because they own the book. That's what somebody said. It's because they own the book. They own the book, and they own the publishing rights, and they own the music, and they own the lyrics. So no one's made more money up of South Park. Oh my God! David looks up to South Park as far as like a comedy writing gig. It's insane. Isn't it insane that show's been going since like ninety, like eight, ninety-seven, ninety-eight? You know what Lin Manuel's made on Hamilton? I mean, not the ticket sales, but only the book. Yeah. What do you mean the book? Why do you keep seeing the book? Lissa? What are you well, talking about book? We're talking about plays over yeah, here, man. Yeah, you nerd. Like, we go a different way with it. We defend plays and we make fun of reading. I just start crying. I just start crying and be like, whoa. And then you're, also your what first book? thought would be like, are you not a comic? I'm just crying. Be like, dude, dude, we thought you were. It's your first podcast? Yeah. Wait, what? what uh, book refers what to. What do you mean the book? It refers to musicals specifically. Lissa is a music major. The song go, book. So it's the written. It's like all of. It's like the script is called the book. So it's anything but that's music not. Especially. Well, in a music musical yeah oh, like the, who wrote okay. the book would be like who wrote the script i thought we were talking about the bible literally the whole no. bible. <laughs> I'm says about the, the bible, book i'm like there's only one book i know of <laughs> wait so it's uh also a musical they, they that means they wrote the script they wrote the script they wrote the music the, the sometimes the music will be with somebody else but they own the oh, rights so they have like multiple uh, uh revenues so when they streams. yeah so Whatever. anytime a regional theater performs that show or does a they version get, of the show anytime a, a school they does it paid. they are getting yeah they have because you have to like it so there i mean there are right imagine taking money yeah, from a school education well educational <laughs> fees shame on you lynn yeah. Yeah. <laughs> educational <laughs> fees are so <laughs> low but remember that church tried to did you say that this church tried to spoof hamilton and make it about jesus and lynn manuel was like yeah you can't do that wait lynn manuel or lynn the- manuel, oh, for hamilton they tried to oh. spoof to what do they call it? Jesus Moulton? <laughs> What's his play on words? Is like that a real a guess? Because I don't think that's what it's called. Ham- <laughs> Hamilton. His, his Hamilton. Name. I'll get it. I, I got it's it. It's called Jesus H. Christ, and the H is Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know how it works. His name was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. His name was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And there's a lot of things he hasn't Wait, done. are you in the wow. show? Just you wait. <laughs> Just you wait. Whoa. He, you hear that? Daniel wrote the book for Jesus yeah. H. Christ. The Bible. Yeah. Um, Jesus H. Hamilton I'm Christ. I'm finishing this fucking point, you two. Get to it. Okay, the play the we keep it. talking about that we would do is called True West by Sam Shepard. Famously, in the early 2000s, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, John C. Riley did it on Broadway. And it's about two brothers. They would switch. You would crush in True West, and you would love doing it. What it's is it? It's fucking wild. It's about these two brothers. One of them is kind of straight-laced, and he's a, he's a Hollywood writer, and the other one is this brother who's kind of lived out in the wilderness, and their dad's a, their dad's a piece of shit, and he's sort of like a piece of shit, too, and he really intimidates his square brother. Which over, one speaks to you more? And over the course <laughs> of the play, the entire set becomes a fucking shit show, and the brothers sort of switch roles it's fucking intense. It was famously done by Gary Sinise and John Malkovich. Steppenwolf did it. It's a Sam Shepard play. But then every like every night they would switch who they'd play. Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley would. But but traditionally that's you don't have to do. That's not like part of the play. But you would. Be Plays are tough, man. Dude, they're really you long. And True West. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll watch it. I'll watch it, it and I'll oh, see. Looks like we can't tell if we hooked them yet. We'll be right back <laughs> on B and R play. <laughs> Let's go to the ladders! You stood out of frame. I know. Smart, right? Friday watch crew. Friday watch crew. What's this countdown? It's like a bomb? Just so we know. Because, dude, as you can tell, we need to get Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your letter out. Get your letter out. Do I need this? Yeah. You're going to want to read this this show. I I will do a play. I'll be in your play. You donate money to a charity of our. (laughs) That's all the show is. I'm going to read it. And we don't put your name on. We put our name on the charity thing. So we look like great. Ready? Hello and good morning. If one of you gradually, over the course of 20 years, morphed into Hulk Hogan, how long do you think it would take for people to start noticing? So today, you're at 0% Hulk Hogan. And in exactly 10 years, you'll be 50% Hulk Hogan. In exactly 20 years, you'll be 100% Hulk Hogan. Sincerely, a fan of the Hulkster. Bling, blong, bling. Okay, so do you understand the setup to this? No. 
I didn't think you did. The whole time he was reading, I was like, Eric does not know. Are we supposed where to just comment on a rando's they, letter? Uh, pe- fans, pen pals, just yeah. send us letters. And yeah. then you just read them. Re- talk about it. And we yeah. respond in audible form. You know, I'll Pretty say easy, it's right? harder to riff off a fan trying to be funny than a fan playing it straight. You want the fan to play it straight but yeah. so that we could be I, funny. I think this, this is guy's think, all, already trying to be like a goofball. Oh, I think <laughs> I think he's just I think he's just drunk. I think, I think he's, he's drunk. drunk and he just got fired from the bar. He's, he's, I just I wrote this. I wrote this, <laughs> and fuck. I mean it. And I've been thinking about this for years. I'll tell you what, brother. <laughs> oh, oh, what, I can tell. I can I tell. I can tell. Oh, okay. Transformation <laughs> began. <laughs> it, it would be. Fuck, I'm already at twenty five percent. You know, it honestly probably wouldn't. It wouldn't be your first brother that somebody would tell. It would probably be like the fourth right, or brother. fifth, right? Like, good to see you, brother. You're you like, know what? If you right. don't try to say it the way, Hulk brother, said, you just start sliding brother in. That's gonna go. Your people are gonna. That's gonna be less obvious. Or like, okay, brother. And or, you give a little bit, bro, like a little bit of that there. Once you start okay, asking brother. people, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, brother? Yeah, but you see, so you do that. Well, you're morphing. Yeah. Okay. What so, are you guys trying to figure out right now? Okay, so let me just throw it at you. If one of you gradually over the course of twenty years, <laughs> so over the course of twenty years, you're gonna morph into Hulk Hogan. How long do you think it would take? For people to start noticing on that track that you've to changed or that you're Hulk Hogan. And exactly 10 years, you're going to be 50% Hulkish. But it's so is, gradual. What's it's so 50%? gradual? I bet five years. I'm going to say five years. Does it mean years. the mustache, the male pattern baldness, and the yes. outfit? You have to slowly have to start say, dressing like it. Do you have to say the N-word? <laughs> Did you do. Yes. Oh, is that a thing? No. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. That's Dog the Bounty Hunter, you think? He, there was a tape. There was a, <laughs> and, and he also tried to be Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he won. <laughs> He won a case because it was a sex tape that got released, and I think he saying said, the N word in a sex tape. Yes, <laughs> God, talk a, about double. Just two, like double what was trouble. the third thing? A double guy, trouble. another guy. No. How did he win it? Because of it, what the it would you broke the his judge privacy was Kyle law by releasing it. Yeah, the judge was Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> I think it was with a famous radio DJ's wife, that Bubba guy or whatever. Bubba Gum Shrimp from Forrest <laughs> yeah. Gump. No, the du- Bubba the Love Sponge. I think it was his wife. <laughs> With Hulk Hogan. Wait, who's <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge? He's a huge radio DJ out of Florida. Why would he <laughs> make shrimp with Forrest Gump? Your first question should be, why do you know all this? Yeah, and I wh- don't know. I think that's Look, what's throwing me off. In Forrest Gump, Hulk Hogan calls Bubba the N word, and they filmed it, and then he fucked his wife. And, and they were like, the "We got to recast," and that's when they got Tom Hanks, and that and that's what beat Goodfellas, <laughs> and that's what beat Goodfellas for the Oscar. Did this come out the same year? Yeah. Oh, I didn't Forrest know that. Forrest Gump beat Goodfellas. I, oh, no, Dances <laughs> with Wolves beat Goodfellas. Okay. But but Forrest Gump beat also something really good. I don't remember. Shawshank? No. I don't know. Shawshank had to get Best Picture. No, it did not. It did not. It, it got, always does. It got Best Syndicated Forrest play. Gump won Best Picture over Pulp Fiction. There it is. Ah. I can see that. I can see, th- I can see that the Academy would... Make such a agreed. Did Shawshank win Best choice? Picture? wasn't even nominated. I bet wasn't even nominated. I bet you it wasn't. Lisa, I'm put cool. this. Dang. What in the fuck are you? What is going? Is oh, this no, real? Dude. TBS. It won. Who won? What? What are you asking? It's Shawshank she said got Shawshank nominated Redemption for Best Picture. Probably wasn't even nominated. It was for best nominated. Picture. Oh wow! For Best Picture, it was nominated. For best Picture, Best Actor, Best Original Score. It was nominated best, and best based on a novel Push by Sapphire, <laughs> written by Stephen King, <laughs> 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 under the name Sapphire. <laughs> Sapphire, aka Stephen King. If you had a gold, if you walked in, what with elements? A blonde, blonde. What do you call the? Uh, Hold on, hold on. We have to back up. Keep this, keep this in your head. Okay. What qualifies as someone, someone that actively calls you out and says, "Are you trying to be Hulk Hogan?" Is that what it is? If you walked in with an orange headband, I would probably say it. So is that where it starts? That's. I'd be like, "What are you, Hulk Hogan?" It's less of a stretch for you to transform into Hulk Hogan. Agreed. What the Me. fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before. I've said it again. Agreed. Because you. Well, no, you don't say the N-word. Because <laughs> you had to think about it. Let me just play it back in my mind if I've ever heard him. I'm glad that it was funny. <laughs> it was in every episode. 
Let me, let me just let me play it back in my mind if I've ever really started a conversation with. Look, it's just us here. <laughs> do you want to? Let me just no, see if he's ever done that. If Roy ever going? Do look. you want to hear this joke or not? <laughs> yeah. It's gonna push buttons. Anyways, it's my new closer. I'm a racist <laughs> who takes opener. choices. <laughs> and my new. It's my hotel, California. <laughs> you can't leave. <laughs> So, yeah, but you're blonde already. Mm. So, if you had a Fu Manchu, ne neither one of us would think you're going Hogan. You wouldn't. No. So, you it would, would take be, longer like, for you. Yeah, if you, said, huh. if, you had a mustache, excuse me, if you had a mustache and you started saying brother a lot, I'd be like, classic Rory. Yeah, he's doing a bit. <laughs> Winner bad an eye, actually. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've seen him do full sets as a German guy. So And nobody was like, did you move? Yeah. yeah. Classic Rory. Now, if I... Went grew out just this and dyed it blonde. You'd instantly that go. would be cool. Well, let me let me I throw this out there. Do that. Let I me throw this out that. there. What do you think you look like at ten percent Hulk Hogan? Tan. Okay. Me, I look. I would look crazy. Very tan, but ten percent. <laughs> just tan. That's an, too, that question is too abstract. <laughs> <laughs> what would ten percent? I, I I I refuse to answer. <laughs> I refuse to dignify oh, that. This with is the response. first refusal ever on the show. A refusal. Refuse. Have one. We've never had a refusal before. <laughs> you know what? I'm striking. I'm striking against that question. <laughs> you a pro wrestling kid. Big time. And who? I had I had uh, 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 bedroom sheets <gasps> that were. Junkyard Dog, Macho yep. Man, Randy Savage, and, and Hulk Hogan on the sheets. Th those are my sheets at night. Did you have the buddies? I had the buddies, the dolls. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I had those. That's I had so Ultimate Warrior. Coco buddy. Beware? I didn't have Coco Beware. But did, were f did you like him? Coco Beware is like a fuzzy memory. Okay. Jake the Snake? Jake the Snake, yeah. Big, big Jake the Snake fan. Did Undertaker. Oh, my that God. That era. He scared me. When we, yeah. Our yeah, age. Yeah. When he looks he exactly the same, too. He hasn't aged in 40 years. Paul Wait, who was, your, who was <clears> your main guy? Who'd you love the most? I love Junkyard Dog he was my great. first favorite and then and then like Ultimate Warrior yes. and, and Undertaker. Why Ultimate Warrior? <laughs> What if this question was Ultimate Warrior? Uh, Ultimate so Warrior? Like, I don't know. He <laughs> just like I run in everywhere I go. I sprint in. Yeah. He he. I don't know. He just always. Uh, I think can I he guess? had a commanding presence, but I loved Macho Man. But can I guess for Hulk. us, if you were anything at me as a child and yep. where we've gone with our careers, that like unfettered energy of like running to the ring and just being full yeah. tilt mm -hmm. yeah. I think speaks to the type of kids we both probably were of like I wanted like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was high very, energy yes. yeah yeah he, he, he felt did. like he could do whatever he wanted yeah, and yeah. he just got out there and started doing it because yeah. I was a very excitable kid the amount of times I've said this to Rory before on this show that my childhood was people being like okay Danny let's be quiet like let's settle down now and the ultimate word was full Full energy, and I I love that. That's a that's a good point, brother. I think that's really. <laughs> Hold on. I think that makes. I think that's. I'm gonna yeah. let that slide, but I'm gonna keep an eye. But on. but I'm also in yellow fucking undies <laughs> with nothing but this up. <laughs> no one. Like a Winnie the Pooh. Kind boots of. boots here down. No one is like. Wait, what are you wearing? I mean, it's L.A. Who knows? So you're in <laughs> South Carolina. Yeah. Pro wrestling. I didn't I didn't like it. I you're from care. South Carolina? Yeah. Greenville. And my friends, like, Where? everybody was He's all from about Greenville. it. Greenville. Greenville, they do Civil War reenactments down there. Yeah, you were at, you went and did it. Yeah. The, was, that, was that in South Carolina yeah, you did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that so fun? Were you scared? Very, yeah. very, yeah. very, very, very scared. Yeah. And Sean O'Connor yes, yeah. thought Sean. we were on our way to a set to film a sketch. He didn't know we were doing it, like, he with real people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then we were kept like coming up with code words. We were like, "Okay, if I yell blue banana, that means I'm about to get arrested. But if I yell red red leaf or something, that means like I've injured somebody or I'm injured." Mm -hmm. And then he he was like looking at me and he tell my director, he was like, "What are you guys talking about?" And we're like, "We're about to do this prank." And he goes, "I thought we were doing a sketch." And I was like. Well, we are in front of real people. Kind of. <laughs> truly, <laughs> and he was like, I just saw him like, oh, oh fuck. Truly, the level of like, like courage that you have is so. I don't, I'm not, I'm not that courageous. I've, I'm pretty nervous. I've written some uh, like on the staff of yeah, writers yeah, yeah, contributing yeah, yeah. on his show a few times. And, and we took and his name off the credits. <laughs> we do it on this show. We do it on this show. 
I said, yeah, this is Ben Bells with Daniel and question mark. Um, You're blurred in the footage. <laughs> right now. And my monster voice. Yeah, and he's like, and so the mafia. Er, anyways, I worked with he Eric. He talks about the mob. <laughs> um, Eric, uh, at one point, had messaged me to come do like a man on the street thing. And I just had to flat out tell him, like, I can't do what you do. I no, can't. you can do I it. You can do it. I can't. Stand up is hard. It terrifies yeah. me. But you, you when were people nervous don't about know the setup, I'm yeah. so nervous. No, it's terrifying. People will go very far with you like you can take the average civilian non-diseased comedy person <laughs> very far mm -hmm. down a road yeah. even sometimes when they're annoyed mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's just they're bound by true social norms and we're we're problems mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you found this out better than anybody <laughs> he'll go with you so wait you yeah. did you ever go to a live pro wrestling show did you ever see it live as a kid wait where'd you grow up and not as definitely not as a kid I don't even think I've seen her live as an adult. Really? Believe it or not. Yeah. I had a tickets. Fucking loser. I had tickets to uh, <laughs> what, what happens in April? Not WrestleMania. SummerSlam. WrestleMania this yeah. year. And uh, didn't make it. I didn't make it. It was my like 40th LA. birthday. I was in Las Vegas and I was like so hungover. I missed my flight. Yeah. Your birthdays I are. Our drugs I, I, our listeners, if you don't know, there's no <laughs> one who actually knows how to throw a birthday party for themselves. At the Eric level of throwing a like it's truly it's like crowning achievement. Literally everyone who's ever been to your party who knows you is like, Oh yeah, I went. There isn't one person who would walk away from that and just be like, I've been to a couple of them. I know <laughs> I got a couple of other buddies where there'll be an elephant there. Like literally, literally. And that, this is With not the opening a joke. of Babylon. I was gonna say, literally, when you watch the opening of Babylon, you go, Ah, it's, it's maybe it's too much. It is real because there's a guy living in our time now and he's sitting right here <laughs> who does throw those parties and it's fucking crazy. I love that. It's insane. I always have plan like I always have plans for my birthday and by the time it rolls around I, I just I just I just dilute down to like I think we'll go get dinner. This is but I love that. You have Eric, to commit. You have to commit. It takes a lot of work. I start working on it in like December and January. It's in April. Eric really rents start. a warehouse. I, I work on it throughout usually, the year. You usually do it here in L.A.? I just did it in New York. Yes, and I just did it in New York for the first time this year, and I'm doing it in New York again. In like a actually. warehouse or something, right? No, it was a venue. It was like a rock uh, party venue. Eric's the guy who gets a venue, venue and then somehow books Cirque du Soleil on acid <laughs> and turns that into a birthday party. I, I, yeah. I contemplate maybe going bowling. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I call ahead to Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. And they're like, sir, we will give you a buzzer when you get here. And I'm like, it's my birthday. Yeah, but it's my it's birthday. It's everybody's birthday. It's Cheesecake Factory. Uh, I went to, uh, I went to, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, I started that sentence wrong. The best birthdays were the ones, the best parties I threw were the ones back in the day when I lived in that really tiny shithole apartment in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And yeah. did you ever go to those? And they were like, then I would like cram the it was like horses the and the ponies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I would yeah, cram yeah. like the camels and all the animals. I'd try to get them in the apartment. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and right. we were like huffing ether. And, no, was great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We would like huff ether and play like throw fire. But wait, the, when you miss WrestleMania, did you do that year in Vegas? For your it, birthday? It was this year. This year. Okay. So I had, uh, so, sorry, I'm sorry. So I had like a private birthday party with just like close friends sure. in Las Vegas. Which uh, I love. Uh, the I weekend love before my birthday. Okay. We did like a, a Fear and Loathing themed Great. party and we did a ton Great. of drugs and we went through Vegas and it is it is a nightmare place to do drugs. Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, do you mail Meow right. Wolf when you were there? Uh, yeah, I did. I think superstore. Whatever I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. did. And then the next weekend, I had a public birthday party in New York, and that was like a ticketed event. And I had like a bunch of thousands. That's of the first time finished. you've done it as like a ticketed thing. Right? Uh, I did it like open to the public. Uh, no, I did it. I did a fire festival themed <laughs> open to the public one here before quarantine. I I began to try to one up it every year and then I was like I wasn't able to pay for the ideas I was coming up with so I was like you guys are paying for it. it's my birthday but Fire, Fire uh, Fest was great because it was just ham sandwiches and shitty tents. it was yeah it was just cheese sandwiches and intense you yeah. know there's another Fire Fest yeah and it and sold you, out immediately but and is, I walked isn't by it that guy also and not Wait, like coming together I think well, it's yeah, also going it? down the same road. Is it Ja Rule again? It has to be. No, it's I think that he's guy out. again. It's that guy. It's who the went main to guy. who like who went, went to, to jail. jail for yeah. it? Yeah, 
and somehow is allowed to do it again. He's a, it's sold out. So that kind of shows you the level of intellect when people go, how did we get here as a people? But yeah, he, yeah. Knows, yeah. he knew the market the first time. And now he has all this notoriety, and he yeah. knows the market again. But also, Wait, he's not going to pull it off again. <laughs> he he jogged by me. I was uh, you tripped him. Good I tri- you. good citizen. <laughs> you're a good citizen. I was walking. And you're like, back oh, from- did that not go how you planned? <laughs> <laughs> but he did like this when he walked by me. He did one of these, oh, and funny. I only noticed him because he was going like this. I was like, I was like, who's that guy? And then I was like. It's the fucking fire fire fest fest guy. guy. He could be a fan and then was afraid you were he was gonna walk into a, a show like walk into your show. I don't oh. know. I don't know. He might have thought this was yeah, a setup. Set up. I wonder if you get that now. I wonder if whenever you're around, people go, well, eh, watch not out. Too watch much. Watch Once watch in a while, this woman like I went to Soul Cycle, uh, which is a spin class, and this woman came up to me after the class and she was like Dude, the whole class, I was looking over at you and like looking for cameras. And it, she goes, I thought the glass was going to explode and my bike was going to come off the hinges and you were going to like send me sailing. And you the, were literally and like, like this. You were literally like. When would that have when would that have been the scariest time for that? To... <laughs> also, she had their, that was her highest heart rate workout ever. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I've never burned that much cardio. But that's true. Much cardio. <laughs> right? Well, we say this like with comics. There are many times you have to go, hey, this isn't a bit. I really want. Like you yeah, have yeah, to like yeah, tell yeah. them, I'm not fucking around. I need to ask you this question. Yeah. And it, t- you on in your, you just got people in Soul Cycle being like, this a thing or yeah. you just riding. Yeah. Not too much, but a little. Uh, I'll get it once in a while. God, I'd love that. I do too. What's um, that blue? All right. All right. So this the is Hulkster. the only letter the whole episode? No, we we'll take one a break. More. We'll do one more. Only two? We take yeah. a three-hour break and then what? we... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the mics stay on during the three-hour break. <laughs> you brought your whittling tools, right? We got a whittle. We just kill time here for three hours needlessly and a then we record a, uh, the last letter. <laughs> We're going to finish that puzzle today. Yeah. Uh, fan right, of the Hulkster. Hulkster. I read it. I'll I know. say it. <sighs> Thank Go for you it. so much. We wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Daniel Van Kirk. Rory Scovel. Eric Andre. And we're back! back. Blogs and Hogs with Daniel and Rory and Eric Andre. The Pen Pals Podcast. I don't even know your day, your week, your month, your year, (laughs) baby. We're scabbing. (laughs) Scab down. Um, Scab Town Podcast, people <laughs> breaking podcast. the strike illegally. We got our SAG card revoked when we took a three-hour siesta, and we recorded the audio of it. Yeah, that would be great. We shot a movie we- on our iPhones. <laughs> uh, go to RoyScovel.com, and then you'll see all my dates that I've got coming up. This comes out when? November what? November 1st. November 1st I'm going to be in Minneapolis on the 11th. Of this month, Daniel Van Kirk is going to be in Chicago on the 11th of yep. this month. You should really book a show for the 11th of November. It's a very popular. Yeah. I'm filming mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That counts. Yeah. That's yeah, a commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. a commitment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm filming mine. It's my first. Can special. I sleep here? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Can I live with you? Uh, um, <laughs> my stuff's at danielvankirk.com. Yuck Fest, 10,000 laughs at Fest in Minneapolis. Plus so many places in between. Go to danielvankirk.com. And if you are planning on coming to the Chicago show on 11-11, the night before, I'm doing a, a show in my hometown of Rochelle, Illinois. Seating is very limited for that. Not a not a comedy venue. Country school? Here in a country school? Look at you nailing it. Um, no, but I will be eating country school when I'm there. What's okay. a country school? It's a restaurant. It's a little restaurant. A little fast food restaurant in my hometown. I don't get it. Oh, we will get you some. <laughs> I've never been to a restaurant. Let me touch your elbows, Kevin. I've never been to a restaurant. What was your... I never... I gotta say, we're we're in plugs and hugs. I refuse. You want me to plug? Yeah, plug away. I'm on tour, ericandretour.com. Come see me in your town, the Eric Andre Explosion. I got a book coming out with Dan Curry and Simon & Schuster, a book called Dumb Ideas, Behind the Scenes Tales of... Prank banking and prank banking at bing bang bang bang. I'm having a fucking Pablo Pan Francisco bacon. meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> I say the same thing over and over again. Poor Pablo, poor Pablo Francisco. Um, and what else am I doing? I got a podcast called uh, Bombing, and I just ask comedians and other celebs what their worst gig of all time. Yeah, I love Baltimore that. was. Uh, hey, we got. And this. I want you guys on the show. I've never bombed. <laughs> Can't do I've it. I've had a crazy comedian tell me. We that. got you a gift. Live song? No, nope, pal strong. Pal strong, dude. We have ours. 
We're big Lance Armstrong yeah. guys. <laughs> so now you have one too. <laughs> We're trying to bring it back, Eric. I'm trying to bring back the the fun bracelets. But if a pen pal ever sees you, because you'll probably keep that on for years, if they see you with that you, and ask for it, you got to give it to them. Okay. Yeah. Or just throw it away when you leave. I feel like that's why what, would you do that? I can see it in his head. He's yeah, like, but this I'm is getting quality. rid of this. <laughs> this Try is to quality. sell it when a pinball comes up. It's forty dollars. Why don't you have a southern accent? Why aren't you like, hey y'all, you got any sarsaparilla and a Confederate flag for my uncle Bammy Whammy? I love I'd get uncle murdered Bammy out Whammy. here if I said that. Oh, so <laughs> you do it's like, have. It's just buried. <laughs> you do have very specific words where it comes out. Like, yeah, yeah, it's there. It can be present. I mean, I'll sometimes I never do it ever stage. heard you. I, mean, I can do. I get into the southern. Thing when you drop, when he, but you've heard him do this his southern like sure. shtick on stage. Wait, you drop this into guy, it like this a guy glove. right here. Yeah, I'll do this voice. Yeah, that's southern. That's this a, is that's who that's I southern. really am, deep underneath the skin in my heart and my soul. Where'd you grow up, Eric? Boca Raton, Florida. Brag. I played there once. That was a wild show. You played there. Oh my gosh! Wow, I played soccer the host, there once. The host did thirty-four. <laughs> thirty-four minutes. Yeah. Boca. Why, why so specific? Place because he goes, he goes. Oh, I'll probably do like twenty five or thirty four, <laughs> or thirty four. Yeah, that's right. imagine, I, so I don't remember. I know it was. Cl- imagine it was way, knowing your closer timing so yeah, well. Yeah, bet, it was yeah. his joke, but he did go over thirty. That's all. I I was I I was sitting in the wing. I could see him. That's crazy. And I was like, dude. Yeah. So I just was like, I'll, okay, I'm doing thirty five. How was it? They yeah. liked it, but it was an interesting spot. Yeah, it was, it was like good. February twenty twenty. Let's, Let's go to this letter. Go to this letter. Hey, Lissa and gentlemen. Yeah. That's fucked up. Why are we even reading this? That's fucked up. You know what? We'll do. Hey. We'll, we'll fix it in post. Just do one where it's like, hey, everybody. I fix it in post. Can you handle this? <laughs> <laughs> I can handle this the whole show. <laughs> hey, Lissa and gentlemen, I need some help finding where a line is. I like weed. It's been a part of my life for multiple decades, and I enjoy it pretty often. I live in a state where it's legal to grow, possess, and consume, and I can even go to a store and buy it, just like liquor or beer. However, I'm not sure where the line lies in terms of how open to be about my use of it. This isn't because I'm worried about my behavior when I'm high. Maybe I should be. But more because while the legal aspect of cannabis has come around, the social element is a lot harder for me to pin down. A prime example is that some friends came over to my house with their awesome, sweet, and curious 8- and 11-year-old kids. The parents are drinkers, and while I wouldn't say they have a problem or anything, they've been known to enjoy five or six or more on a Saturday pretty regularly and don't use cannabis. I'm growing a couple of plants in my backyard again legally, and the kids asked what that cool giant thing in the garden was. I told them it was cannabis, and that while it didn't make vegetables or conventional flowers, it made stuff that used by adults a lot like we use uh, alcohol. The husband was fine with this explanation, but the wife was not. She felt that I should have just said it's a plant and left it at that. I would never tell anyone where to draw lines with their kids, and I really respect and care about everyone in this family, so I'd never want to hurt or offend them. But at the same time, it feels weird for someone to tell me that I shouldn't address cannabis at all when they feel comfortable asking their kids to get them a beer out of the fridge. For the record, I personally am uncomfortable smoking around kids, primarily because I don't want to show them uh, that visual as an ex-cigarette smoker, keeping that concept from getting normalized in a young brain just seems like good standard policy. But where's the line in just talking about it? As a guy who grew up sneaking into alleys or going camping in order to hide my weed smoking from my parents and siblings, I feel like I have a lot of unnecessary and unhealthy inbuilt shame about this that doesn't need to be passed on. But I also don't have a great compass for navigating this new framework. Any help from y'all would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for still being crazy after all these years. Halfway to 10. ten. I appreciate y'all, and I wish you well. Your Patroni, Adam. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, 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 bling. Adam Divine from Workaholics. It's Adam Divine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he keeps asking to come Where's on. Where's the line? <laughs> he keeps asking to come on the show, and we're like, just write in. Just write in. Just write in. Write us. Some people are guests. Some people are letter writers. Yeah, just write it to us. Yeah, I I uh, understand this man's conundrum in our new twenty first century world. I would say, um, he I, I would say it's in the eye of the beholder. He probably did the right thing, but the the wife is entitled to her opinion. Her opinion. The the husband is entitled to his 
opinion. Everybody uh, raises their children different differently. Are you reading this off? With the different, it's right up on the ceiling. I wrote it before. I got, I hacked your email, got that letter. I wrote it as like a cue card, like how they do Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. Blacklight? Uh, it's just blacklight lettering up there? I have blacklight contact lenses in, and I <laughs> this entire room, it's like that movie Memento, where yeah. they, Guy Ritchie or whoever the fuck, what's his name? Um, Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. Nolan. Ritchie, oh, Guy Pierce, Pierce, whatever. Yeah. Guy Ritchie, Pierce. Pierce. Gordon Ramsay. Guy Ritchie, Rich Pierce. Joe Pantoliano. Gordon Ramsay. He's got tattoos all over. Um, uh, the mom is a hypocrite. I mean, alcohol is a drug as well. Just Great. because it's normalized, alcohol is way worse Socialized, for you than yeah. cannabis yeah. Uh, health-wise and everything else for your mental and physical health. So uh, if you ask your kid to get a beer out of the fridge but have a problem with... Uh, your friend pointing out what a plant is or and it does that it's for adults. Like he was like, yeah, and it's, it's for adults. Yeah. For adults. So I think the wife, the, the, I, but I don't think she knows better, but uh, Cause it's new she, territory. That's why it's new territory. But yeah, uh, yeah alcohol is but the most dangerous like drug like, in the world. What do you mean? You kids don't know what whippets is like, he's not yeah. like introducing the drug and then showing them about it. They were like, what is that? Do you mm -hmm. smoke pot? Very little. It's not my drug. It's not my, my drug. It gets me a little bit in my head. It makes me antisocial, a little paranoid. One of my favorite. Times. I know you're a you're a you 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 smoke the devil's lettuce. I love the lettuce. Yeah, the little Caesar salad dressing yeah. on there. I love. Uh, we did uh, the first getting Doug with high. Doug Benson's getting Doug with yeah. getting Doug high. Whatever it was. Getting yeah, Doug getting Doug with, with high. high. And uh, we did it live at Largo, and it was the most perfect cast of people and how they respond to pot because it was Steve Ag who was always five minutes behind. Love it Steve. was Jonah Ray who completely shut down. Mm -hmm. and me and he Harris Whittles were like giggling little school kids just having a great time. And then Eric, who we... That's a would, lot of people. Eric, who people. was there... I don't remember. And like people. chiming in, but also navigating a mental breakdown because of the pot, which yeah. was so mind-blowing because before you had gotten there, I was like... Eric does all the drugs. This is going to be a... He won't no. even get high. It's the scariest drug out of... I've done every drug. Yeah. I'm going to Peru to do ayahuasca now. I really? I smoke all various toad venom. Get him! Anyway, You're yeah. under arrest. We got this was you. a setup. We got you. You thought you were going to be in a play. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not entrapment. <laughs> wait, you... Uh, wait, you uh, weed wait. is the scariest drug out of every drug I've ever done. Wait, were you saying And I've done toad? every single drug. Were you saying a toad thing? What were you saying? Bufo all various toad venom oh yeah what is that it's a dmt derivative oh, there's a okay. there's a uh You've mexican that. desert toad that secretes a venom that is a serotonin derivative when smoked it's like a it's a dmt it's a 5 meo who dmt figured that who out figured first? it out no it is crazy so there was, was like this not is, drink it they were like <clears> it was one it. guy it was a dude in the 80s so basically there was some I don't know if he was like a zoologist or yeah, something. Yeah, there was some sort of science. He had to see a chemical. In there, there. Yeah, so there was some textbook. There was some like, it was like the textbook on frogs and toads. And there was like one sentence where it was like the Sonoran uh, Bufal various toad secretes a venom that when combusted creates a serotonin derivative. That's all it said. And the guy was like serotonin derivative. That's what, that's what makes psychedelics. Right. That's what makes mushrooms and acid work. So he fucking smoked it in the eighties or something, and went to Ooh. went to the fucking moon and back. It only lasts ten minutes, but it's the most high I've ever been in my entire ten life. Ten minutes in in our real time. It felt like three is, seconds. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. What does the what is the timetable for the feeling? Um, it felt like you completely. Uh, there's no world. Like you're completely. It's like propofol, like going under for a, a surgery. You're completely like matter and time and existence stop. There's no room for the, doing this recreationally. There's not like like when you're on mushrooms. I know that I'm talking to you. Yeah, I see your shoe. Yeah. You know what I mean. You're also having see, a laugh. You're, you're, you're having a connect. laugh. Yeah. Uh, even on acid, I would know that I'm in a room. That's a chandelier. That's a rug. But this, this you're you gone. You're completely gone. You're just raw motions in the center of the universe. And it is like a complete, it's like um, when you uh, hard reset your computer. It's like a complete brain reset. And it was fucking crazy. I would a totally do it again. Anything stay with you after or after the 10? Are you, are you just like, okay. Yeah. Then after the 10, you're like kind of in this like dream, like uh, George Lucas THX kind of world, mm -hmm. but you're back on earth. Yeah. And then after 20 minutes, you're like almost completely sober. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's That's totally cool. insane. Yeah. What about? But uh, weed is way, 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 way scarier for me. Like edibles. Yeah. Is I think a guaranteed bad trip, biggest nightmare. I, I would drink. I would get high off Robitussin before I ever did an edible. I believe you one hundred percent. I yeah. think that we all have our own chemical makeup. Yeah. And and outside chemicals will affect our balance. Yeah. And people talk about the socialization and commonness of alcohol. There are people who go, Yeah, I just can't do whiskey. Yeah, and they I'm just like know that. they can I do can't beer. Do yeah. They can do beer, but they can't do whiskey. Yeah. And for a person to go, yeah, weed is. My, it's Steve Martin in his book, same thing. He, yeah. I think once or twice he did it, and he's like, I yeah, was had a panic attack, and he was I'm like, I can't die. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. and you know, yeah, he played into the hippie thing for a while, but he was like, I just knew I couldn't do that. Drug. I think it's advertised. You see Seth Rogen and Wiz Khalifa smoking, and it's for like some... it's it's ass. It, it's like it looks and Bob Marley and Snoop Dogg. It's like. It's like they're smoking a giant Xanax. Like, oh, it takes all my anxiety away. It chills and me it out. And and it probably does for them. It uh, definitely does yes, for them. Yes, Why would yes, they I smoke would so much? Yes. But for me, complete opposite. It's like every anxiety. It makes me depressed. It makes me incredibly anxious. It makes me um, f- feel like I don't have my faculties. I disassociate. It is like... Completely does not mesh with my brain chemistry. One of you but I love mushrooms, Xanax, nitrous mushrooms. oxide, and uh, rum. I love that. <laughs> Mus- I would believe it if somebody goes, "Yeah, mushrooms are bad for me." But I would have a—I don't want to say harder time because I don't want to judge somebody else's truth. But I mushrooms feel so medicinal for the emotional therapy. Yes, yeah. yeah, I know. But there are people who will tell you the same thing about weed, and Erica go, "Not me." Yeah. So, but I, I like—I think there's way more people who should try mushrooms than try weed. And like yeah. dig some stuff up. Yeah, sure. I think they're just different medicines for different uses. And well, mushrooms different... is also way less. Also, there's different ways of ingesting it, but also you can't deny that we are all different chemical makeup. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean the things that you can do. I mean, it would. I mean, I don't even. And and this is this is kind of enlightening this moment because I haven't tried so many drugs. Because of how I've responded to pot, like I what do you mean? get I, like at a certain point when when I level out on pot and I'm on stage, it's like I love it. It's the greatest. But more most of the time, the first 20 minutes of getting high for me is legitimately thinking I'm going to die. I mean, I've been <laughs> Wait, you have to go through that every that? time, almost every time. But I <laughs> but I like when I'm on the road. If I'm like, oh, I'm going to get high and go on stage. If someone's if someone's opening for me, a feature or whatever, I will say, how much time are you going to do? 34 and, minutes. And I'm like, they're like, oh, what do you want me to do? I'll be like, well, I go, if I say do like 20, I'm just, do, do what you're going to do. But tell me right now, will you do 20 or will you do 25? But you're just say you're doing 20. If you're going to do 25, just tell me you're going to do 25. Because I'm going to time out smoking. Oh. Because when that fucking panic starts to set in... If I could just get on stage, I can bypass where the, the, me being alone thoughts will go, and I can lay into that nervous energy and have a lot of fucking fun with the audience. Yeah. I just don't want to sit back here because five minutes feels like 20 minutes. Right. So and someone back, will, you'll be like, all right, I'll do 20, and I'll get off at 20. I'm like, all right, just remember you said that. Right. And sometimes when they get off at 25, I'm like, why did you lie to me? <laughs> <laughs> or early, or early, and you're not through it yet. Did But... So for the first 20 minutes to bring it back of getting Doug with high when you guys did it together, did you get high 20 minutes before it started? I can't remember. I think we you started with probably. the volcano bags. This was back in volcano. And did you know at the time? That time. That remember that? Gonna, remember that? Gosh, I forgot about that. Did you know that that's what it was going to do to you? And you were just like, I'll do it for you guys. Yeah. You're, you're, a, you're I a, smoked since I was 13 years old. And when I was 13, 14, I actually loved it. And then around 15, 16, it like turned on me and I never got back to the original high. My body was just like, this no longer works for you. It was just like, bump, done, you hit the wall. And I never got back when I smoked when I was that young, which I can't believe I smoked that young, but I was like in eighth grade, ninth grade. I would like smoke weed and do act outs for my friends. And I was like, it was like the beginning of me doing stand up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then, um, so that's what I and then, like. And then that's around, what I would do. Towards the end of high school, beginning of college, it was Stay a, on that for a me. hard 180. It's a hard 180. I want to be off mic. Okay. That's a good. <laughs> I don't want the world to know about this. I don't want to know about a people. I want them to just 180. visually see my lips moving. I don't but need not them to know yet. how many degrees it was for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think your answer is no, Rory, but have you done Quaaludes? No, but they're, they they don't exist anymore, but I heard they're no, coming that's not back. True. I heard they're coming back. I also, we ha- we all have a, mu- a mutual friend 
who was at a party. God. God. <laughs> who was at a party uh, in like 2019 of like an older Hollywood comedy person, and they brought out a jar. And, I would totally and everyone, do them. Oh, I've asked people who have lived you done through them? the 80s. No, but I asked people who lived through the 80s. You ask old boomers, yeah, they're and, like. And, and, they, and they go, I haven't done drugs in 25 years. If you gave me a Quaalude right now, I would take it in an instant. Really? Yes. They're that good, yeah. Yeah. There is, yeah, I think uh, they're coming back around. Because so what, I somebody try found it. the formula? Because there was yeah, a limited. It's just, and then, a, it's a just a, yeah, if you find like a clandestine chemist that knows basic chemistry they can God, whip it up for you that's not the name of your next album <laughs> clandestine, <laughs> clandestine chemist you are you're missing out if you're not before we out. before we give all our opinions on this how do you how are you feeling <laughs> perfect yeah get how that you out. feeling just boof to quaalude brother yeah, boof one, dude. <laughs> how you how you feeling going into your ayahuasca trip nervous but i think that's part of it okay i think that's part of it and you'll have a a guide Doing it in an alleyway with, and you're just gonna with throw a Craigslist up, rando. You're going to throw up raw sewage and talk about <laughs> things that happened when you were a kid <laughs> that you don't even know. Wait, have about. you done ayahuasca? Never, 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 oh, never, this never is done exciting. It. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah, love never that. Never done it. Never done it. I need to do it. I just know that I have so much that you'll dig I just don't you know, know if I want to puke out sewage for 30 straight minutes. Nah, you'll be fine. In my mind, you know when you see a kid playing at the beach and they're grabbing a whole bunch of wet sand and pulling it towards them? No. That's how I picture. If I did ayahuasca, that emotionally I'd be gr- drudging up all. Why of don't this you try? Stuff. That's good. That's catharsis. What about ketamine? You can't just try it. I've done ketamine. Yeah, talk, I've done talk, ketamine therapy too. Talk, yeah, how, I've done I MDMA do therapy, psilocybin therapy, and ketamine therapy. I might do ketamine therapy. Ketamine's cool. It's not my drug. It's like a disassociative. It's a little strange. Okay. Uh, I don't dislike it, but I don't love it. Okay. It's just kind of like interesting to me. It's uh, kind of like you know when you take somebody out to sushi and they're not into sushi and they take like a little bite and, and you're like, what do you think? They're like. It's interesting. Yeah, 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 that's how I feel about ketamine. I'm like, I'm not mad at it, but I'm just like. So okay. if I do ketamine, I'm not gonna have some panic attack. Probably not. It's a disassociative, so you're going to uh, people that love weed. Ask Reggie Watts about it. People that love weed love ketamine. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> but you, and they have you like dis- a weird. You've done some dis. I mean, like I feel like when you do a float, that you're you're trying to experience a disassociative. I think disassociation though is kind of maybe where my anxiety lies because my brain cannot accept that I will come back to association, and I just think I'm now permanently disconnected. No, 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 no. That's okay. <laughs> And you're the therapist that I'm with when doing it. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> All right, this is a great fucking. Wait, what do you? So I think that, that 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 uh, the, hey, the the wife is uh, her intentions are pure, but she's. I would misguided. apologize. She's a fucking Nazi. Sorry, mean, Honestly, she's a Nazi. <laughs> I would say, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, but I view weed just like I view alcohol. It's the choice for a person of age and responsibility I agree. to do. And if my child asked me what this is, I wouldn't lie and say it's grape juice. I would say it's wine, and you can't have any. Right, and exactly. You don't lie. Is, exactly. You're not like, oh, it's grape juice. So, you, you, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll apologize that I offended you, but just you know it, that my intent wasn't to radicalize your kid. Well, my wife and I, right. you know, I've 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 left like a, a bowl out on the kitchen counter with a sure. lighter, and I've left you and know, forced your kid to around, smoke and it. And I'd say, you, well, you're gonna smoke the whole pack. <laughs> and my wife's like, she never was smoking it. Um, <laughs> I just jump right to that lesson. Um, but when my our daughter has like seen it, we try to be careful and not leave it out, and we definitely try to not have her see us doing it, but. There's times that she's like smelled us, uh, you know, when she's in bed, if she's like woken up and we've we've smoked and now she's confronting us. But there's been moments where she's been like, what is that? And we just say like, well, it's for adults and it's, you know, it's a med- it's like sort of a medicine for adults and it's not for kids. And there isn't any part of me that's worried about it because what in what world do you think kids aren't going to drink in middle school or high school? And what world do you think kids aren't going to learn things that, today we probably don't even know we're even drugs like we're so out of the loop of like what things mm-hmm. are like i point. think the best thing you do is just brutal honesty with your kids in some of these situations because they have to know what is out there in the world you can't well, yeah just also also from lying you kids or omitting uh, 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 omitting uh lying through omission or like omitting information from your kids isn't going to prevent them from smoking weed. If my anything. parents never talked about weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents didn't smoke weed, but they never talked about weed, but I smoked weed since I was in but, eighth but, grade because no, yeah. so right. I listened to fucking Beastie Boys and Cypress Hill and Wu-Tang all day. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what do these guys have in common? What's the... <laughs> where, is my in- <laughs> where is my membrane and how can I make it insane? <laughs> yeah. but, but no, you're exactly you know. right. Because that omission will just make a child go, I got to figure out what that, what I wasn't... Oh, right. You're going to make... Yeah, you're going to bring... they'll know. They can snuff it out. And you make a great yeah. point too. I just saw this uh, which is always code these days for TikTok. I just saw this where uh, like a congressperson was like reading some super sexualized 
<laughs> passage from too, a book, yeah. right? And someone made a great comment, and they're like, this dumb fuck thinks that if any 13-year-old wants to find out about sex stuff, they're going to go to a goddamn library? Yeah. It's yeah. in cell phones. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. like yeah. no kid yeah. is like, I want to know everything about sex. I'm going to go to the library. Yeah, it's yeah. already what here. Like you were saying, like, ship. you're not going to keep that from them. So yeah. at least be a part of their education rather than hoping and like that they find out and the people they choose to find that out with care about them and it goes well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Also, also, also the, the, the wife in the letter needs to know, like, Alcohol is way more dangerous than weed. Alcohol yeah. and is, that's something you also know. to tell like the kid, like what are you drinking? Like oh, what's this? Like you could like, obviously they need to be a certain age where you kind of explain that to them. But like if the eleven year old is asking, it's like that kid is eleven steps away, steps or away in, from like on the starting steps. to like be in a world where he's going to be offered things and he or she has to start contemplating how they're going to respond to it, and right. they need to know what it is so that they can identify it and then they can make an uh, you know an educated guess on how they should handle themselves about it you know whether they do these things or not but i got to say it is a slippery slope you're talking about saying this to someone else's kids and i think if those parents are like i think you could have just said plant and left it at that then i think you're in the convenient position of going oh yeah sure yeah no you're right can like, i ask you i, as I don't a think parent? there's anything you can do about it because that's information they want to relate to their kids, and no matter where they are and what we all think, right? That's their children, and that's their place to offer it to it's them. Their prerogative, yeah. And also, it seems to me this isn't necessarily a friendship where you're like, well, let's push the accelerator no, of yeah. debate here and actually get into it. Like, it seems like kind of a moot point where you just go, you know what? You're right. In fact, in the future, I'll just say it's a plant. But when it comes to my own kids, I'll explain to them. So, can, what it is. as a parent, would you would you have liked it if? The kid was like to your friend, let's say to me, uh, what is that plan over there? If I was like, I don't know. Why don't we uh, ask your dad about that? Sure. Just like I, defer I it. I also would not have cared if you would of have course said you, it. Of course you don't. But I mean, in yeah. this situation, maybe you just constantly go, I don't know. What When we go inside, you should ask but, your parents But to be is. fair. And they don't I, remember to ask. If I'm with you and you also are just being point blank brutal honest, if you were like, oh, that's a plant that I smoke and I get high and it alters my mental it's state. For adults. I would go, I don't know that we needed that full answer of sure. the whole fucking story of what it is. Right. You I know? understand that. So, what, you yeah. know what? I always think it comes Ladies down and gentlemen, to thanks so much much for listening. Uh, <laughs> um, I think you address this letter to me. So oh, yeah, I didn't even think, why did we even bother? Oh, no. We should have just handed it to her and been like, Lissa, we'll just be on camera. I think at the end of the day, and if parents, it's okay with you, Lissa, I had to follow up to what Eric said really quick before we go, but it's your letter. Yeah, oh, but parents get to decide how they want to parent. I have my best friend's sister is raising her kids in a religious household and I came right in there and I was like, oh my God, did you see blah, blah, blah? And they corrected me. Did you see two chicks, one cup? Yeah, <laughs> and they weren't into that. Well, here it is. But like the religious, <laughs> one. the they, religious version. Hey, champ, wake up. <laughs> they uh, they corrected me and said, "Oh my gosh!" In this household, so Oy. that is that ridiculous to me? Yes, that's ridiculous. Sure. But it's not my house, so like, and those aren't my kids, so yeah. I'm fine to correct myself in that household and, and say the word "gosh" and leave as soon as possible, like. That's fine. You know, so like I, I would always defer to the parents in a situation like that. Always. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to hit you were just you're so right about alcohol. The, the, the percent it's a, just a poison. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. percentage of alcohol is the percentage of poison that it will affect your body. Right. Whereas weed has also numbers to suit five milligrams, 20 milligrams. That's just the percentage of how high you'll get. And then it goes away. Mm -hmm. So like it's just a poison. We just measure it. And I love it. <coughs> we'll fuck with the cabin supreme. <coughs> Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. All right. Uh, Adam, love it. Great letter. Yep. We wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals. Roy Scoville. Daniel Scoville. Eric Andre Scoville. I completely disassociated before I said my name. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's normal. There you go. It's normal. Hmm. And I was like, I think I'm more tired in New York than LA. I was like thinking about my life.